Today I want to talk about symbolism. And to do that we're going to take a look at the secret of Nim, and mostly because the secret of Nim is widely regarded as having multiple layers of meaning. So we're going to take a look at the character side of that by analyzing the main character, Brisby. So let's meet Brisby. Jonathan Brisby. Never mind, let's meet Jonathan. Who was killed today while helping with the plan much longer. Who's dead. I am lost in knowing how to help his widow. Go tell her what happened. Or maybe a hug. Perhaps best that I do nothing at present. Gift baskets. Maybe a card. Jonathan. What is that? Why are you talking to him? Is that Jonathan Brisby? Your thoughts must comfort her tonight. Please take comfort in the fact that your husband is dead. She'll be waiting. And you will not return. Why? That's awful. Why are you just gonna let her sit there? You know what happened. You could go talk to her. Am I missing something? Is there something romantic and deeply meaningful about a widow sitting at home wondering if her husband is gonna come home? Cause to me that's just cruel. So after the extremely mysterious first scene, we finally get to meet Brisby. Mr. Ages, may I please speak to you? What? The next character we're gonna meet here is Ages. Great Jupiter woman, what do you want? Who's a delight. <laughs> Brisby needs his help. She needs to get some medicine for her son. My son Timothy is so sick. Timmy. And ages, showing deep concern for the life of a child. I suppose I could fix up something. And respect for his neighbors. But don't touch anything. I'm right in the middle of something uh, very important. I understand. Oh, do you? Gives her some medicine. You asked my advice and I gave it to you. I'm sorry. He must stay in bed. Now mix this, uh, this, this powder in a broth. Oh, bless you, sir. And bless yourself, you'll need it. You! Watch your blessing, woman, get it away! Thank you once again. Oh, shoo, shoo, shoo. Go on now. Go on. Thank you so much. I mean, he helped her, but geez, do you think he could have been any more of an asshole about it? I don't like asshole characters. I don't. I think they're put into movies to get attention from the audience that they don't necessarily deserve. It's kind of like reality TV. If somebody's being dramatic, well, you're going to pay attention. I but, I speaking something. symbolically, okay. as this uh, is me, a symbolic review, and, no, if I had to come up with a reason as to why Aegis is acting the way he is, I'd say, well, it symbolizes Brisby's world and how it's changed since her husband's death. How a regularly mundane, easy task of asking a neighbor for some help and some medicine is, is really difficult. It's not uncommon, but you can die from it. Still not very nice. I mean, honestly, look at her. She's so harmless and innocent and nice and gentle. And why would anyone want to be mean to her? Be between this guy being an asshole for really no reason, and Nicodemus being, oh, I think I'll just let her sit at home and discover that her husband's never going to come back on her own. I don't think any of that is deserved. It's got to be symbolic, otherwise it's just mean and a little bit sexist. So next scene, Brisby encounters a crow on her way home, which I'm actually going to skip because it doesn't really have anything to do with anything. The one thing I do like about this scene, though, is how it shows Brisby in, you know, a neutral, carefree, everyday scenario. She's not really under any threat. She's not being intimidated or spoken down to. But I'm going to skip it because of Jeremy. And not that I don't like Jeremy. It's, I have complete respect for him as a character. Jeremy. <laughs> Although there's eventually an interesting well, tidbit near the end. If you're going to feather a nest, you've got a lot to learn about how to treat a lady. Ironic, considering the two male characters we've met before this have demonstrated exactly how not to treat a lady. Right. But possibly my you're favorite right, thing about right. this scene is this. You're right. None of the girls I meet want to get serious. I doubt they'd survive. Frisbee's got a sense of humor. Aww. So the next scene we're introduced to Brisby's family inside of home, and we're also introduced to Auntie Shrew. Brisby! Why is she always coming around here poking her nose in where she's not wanted? Oh, hello, Spawn of Ages. I must speak with your mother. 
You've been to see us for ages. Two ages. That old flimflam. Which is name speak for colossal asswad. Why did you age? But it's pretty clear that she's trying to help. I mean, in fact, I'm not afraid of the dark. Mort. I'm not afraid of the farmer. I can't. Yeah. I'm not even scared of dragon. I'm not even afraid of 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 the great owl. Will you hush up? Are you hush up? Oh, Dan. Precocious monster. Bossy bullfrog. Spoiled brat. Loud mouth. <gasps> okay, we can now officially add Martin to our list of assholes. That will be quite enough. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, movie. It's not like I was trying to take that character seriously or anything. I mean, maybe I'm just crazy, but I'm sensing some of the themes on the mistreatment of women. I mean, okay, maybe we can dismiss Ages as just that's his personality, and Martin is just coping with the loss of his father and representing discord inside Brisby's home. But then, what was all that stuff about Jeremy needing to learn how to treat a lady? You've got a lot to learn about how to treat a lady. Seems kind of random then. I mean, but I'm probably overreacting, reading too much into it. It's probably nothing. A man came by today. He was asking if we had noticed anything strange with the rats on the farm. Well, I said no, nothing unusual. Yeah, I have to get up early. No, I really don't think I'm crazy on this. I mean, there's a definite pattern. Of male characters just being assholes to female characters. The heck? What did I tell you? Moving day. What about Timmy? The chill in the air could kill him. Well, child, that tractor surely will. Oh! The plow is here! Run for your life! I've got to try and stop that thing. Wait! Frisbee! Come back! Frisbee tries to stop the plow on her own, but ultimately she freezes and becomes paralyzed with fear. Luckily, Shrew knows exactly how tractors work and cuts the fuel line, thus shutting the machine down. Frisbee! I'm glad the character earned back a little bit of respect, and she just saved Brisby and Timmy's life. My stupid Martin. I wish Jonathan were here. Well, he's not. You know, if all this is supposed to be symbolism for what happens when your husband dies... <sighs> Holy... Sh oh, whoa. I mean, her husband dies, and then suddenly, her son becomes deathly ill, a plow is gonna come rip her house out of the ground and kill her son, she's nearly eaten alive by a cat, her neighbors all treat her like crap, plus there's discord inside her house, I mean, for God's sake! This movie seems to represent widowhood as something of a death sentence. I mean, I guess that could be an interesting theme, but... I mean, it's a little outdated. Kind of sexist. Not very nice. Oh, my child, show a little courage. We're fighting for Timmy's life. Jonathan, your wife, I fear, is in desperate trouble. <laughs> you were watching that? You were just gonna sit there and do nothing while that tractor mowed over their house? Jonathan. I just about witnessed your wife die, as well as your youngest son. Why did I sit here and do nothing? It sure is a good thing the shrew knew how tractor few lines work. Or else, you'd probably be pretty upset with me. My bad. A visit to the Great Owl may indeed be profitable. Yeah, or she could get eaten. Why don't you just do something? Go to the owl then, Mrs. Brisby. Go there. Are you actually making this happen, or are you just being dramatic with your indoor wind? Why have you come? The plow has come early this year. Move your family. You don't think she thought of that already? Thought you were supposed to be wise. Idiot. Yes, I would move, but Timothy has pneumonia. He can't even get out of bed. You must move to a place where it'll be safe from the plow.
Is that the extent of your advice? What a, a rabbit comes to you? My son ate herbicide. Your children must not eat herbicide. It's not safe. Please, there must be another way. There is no other way. I must bid you good evening, Mrs. Uh... Mrs. Frisbee. Frisbee. Oh, no, you don't. Don't you dare! Mrs. Jonathan Frisbee? I swear, if you, I... Why, yes. He was my husband. His name is not unknown in these woods. Please, sir. I'll do anything to save Timmy. There is a way. You asshole! You nasty, smelly, very bad at housework asshole! What, you were just gonna turn her away and let her son die? Unless she has an important husband? Oh, it's so tragic. If only she had an important husband. I might have been able to help her. So sad. You're supposed to be the wise owl? How do you help anybody? I'm not convinced you do help anyone. You just eat people. Go to the rats. As for Nicodemus. Nicodemus? But how can they help? They must move your house to the lee of the stone. What stone? Where's home? In the garden patch. By the stone. How did he know it was by a stone? What stone? Lee, what? You who? No rat could move my house. It's... They have ways. And if the issue was moving her house... Why would you go get a bunch of rats? Why wouldn't you pick large animals? Like... I don't know... Owls? Honestly, go get some of your owl buddies and help her move her house right now. Don't just send her off and make her somebody else's problem. Remember... The Lee of the Stone. The Lee of the Stone. Oh, it's all so mystical. Yeah, because other side of the rock wasn't magical enough. <gasps> and here to solidify our themes of treating innocent ladies in need of assistance like complete slag is this asshole. I need help. Brisby? Oh, it's our original asshole. The owl told me to see Nicodemus. Oh, well, yes, perhaps you should. You should. The owl said? No one has ever seen the owl and lived to tell about it. Please, could you take me to see Nicodemus? <laughs> yes. And the only reason this asshole is going to help her is not because a child's life is in danger or common courtesy or sympathy or any of that bullshit. No, it's because another asshole knew her asshole of a husband and sent her to see another asshole. Jonathan, your wife has come at last. What do you mean she's come at last? You're the one to send her to see the owl. Yes, this could be profitable. Unless he just sends you to me, in which case it was a huge waste of time. Perhaps now I can repay you for your kindness to me. I was actually kidding last time. But you really are an asshole. You'll repay some dead guy. But you won't do a nice lady a service and help her out, you know, out of the goodness of your heart? Because you seem to have it pretty damn good down here. A lot of protection and mystical and magical devices. You can't use your privilege to help out the common creatures. What, Brisby is just the wife of some dead guy? Just some tool that you can use to clear your conscience of a debt? To a dead guy? You're an asshole, you're an asshole, you're an asshole, you're an asshole, and you are definitely an asshole, whoever you are. You must swear absolute secrecy. If any of this ever got out, 
We'd have humankind bulldozing their way down here to, to blow the place apart. Yes, that's right. Brisby is going to run off to her good friend, the farmer, and tell him where you are. That's what she's gonna do, you moron. Reveal thy name. Justin, you featherhead. Get your hands off me. Okay, okay, just a joke. I didn't mean any harm. Oh, look! A non-asshole! Look at me, I'm goofy and suave and handsome and I treat Brisbane with some ounce of respect! And they should have just put a big sign on his hat that said, Try not to like me! But honestly, a character who is respectful before he knows who she was buried to? Yes, very refreshing. I suppose... No, sweet lady, you are welcome here. Um, we tend to take ourselves a little too seriously. And he calls it the way it is! That's exactly what this is! This is a story of a lady who needs the help of a big, fancy men's club, and they will only help her when they discover she belonged to a former member of theirs. May I present Mrs. Jonathan Brisby. Jonathan Brisby is dead! Thank you! Wait! She has been to see the Great Owl! He has told her that we could move the Brisby home to safety. We have urgent problems of our own. Let the lower creatures fend for themselves. I guess nobody told these guys that being married to Jonathan Brisby is a free pass to life. I smell an opportunity. I'll explain later. Mrs. Brisby, it would be an honor to assist Jonathan's widow in any way. Oh, so when being Jonathan's wife doesn't help, nor does permission from the owl, then the only reason they'll help her is because one lunatic wants to sabotage the operation for his own evil plans? You know, I think I prefer that. If the owl was gonna let the lesser creatures fend for themselves, how is that different? Letting a small child be crushed by a plow, or having it fall and crush someone as a political strategy. Either way, someone dies. But this way, the rats of Nim won't get to leave and live on their own. Why do we care? They're a society of assholes. They've proven that they will do nothing to help anyone but themselves. They don't share their electricity. They don't try and better the lives of lesser animals. They only care about the damage of their own pride in that they have to actually steal from a lowly human to live. Come closer, my child. The great owl sent me to you. Oh, did he? Don't patronize her, you ass bag! You know damn well the owl sent her! He is a dear comrade. Why? Because you're both old and intimidating? No one has ever seen the owl and lived to tell about it. You do know that your dear comrade has eaten every visitor he's ever had, right? Ah, Mrs. Jonathan Brisby. She has a name, you know. It's, uh... It's... There is a book there. Jonathan Brisby. He was killed... Uh, killed t today while drugging the farmer's cat, Dragon. Oh, so that's how he died. You know, it's damn lucky for Jonathan that the farmer's cat happened to be named Dragon. It, he's like a knight. He's a dragon slayer. I mean, do you think it would really sound that fancy if the cat was, you know, like, something cutesy? Jonathan Brisby was killed today while drugging the farmer's cat. Fluffles. Oh, but how Fluffles was fierce. He breathed fire and acid and dead babies.